Wonderful. Well, let's get started then. I'm Jen Collins Moore. I'm the author of the Maggie White Mysteries, which are set in Rome, as well as several short stories, which are set in New England. And I am so excited to be here with four or soon to be four very talented authors to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is short stories, because I am still on the learning curve of short stories. And so I have lots of questions to ask these folks to help myself become a better writer. And I know we've got people in the audience as well who are eager to learn. So I wanted to get started with some brief introductions. And if you can just wave when I say your name. So we'll start with Tina de Belgard, who is the author of the, Winter, of the Batavia on Hudson mystery series, which debuted last fall with Winter Witness. And her short fiction has appeared in a Mystery Writers of America anthology, among others. And before turning to writing full-time, Tina's been an exporter, a paralegal, a teacher, and a library clerk, all of which I'm sure make their way into your stories somehow. So I know we'll hear more about that. Uh, next up, we have V.S. Kamenis, who published five story collections and a legal mystery uh, thriller series featuring Dana Hargrove, a prosecutor who later becomes a judge. And her short stories have appeared in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine and Crime Fiction Anthologies. And she also has a very interesting background. She's a lawyer, a dancer, and a dance teacher. And we have Charles Salzberg, a former magazine journalist and nonfiction book writer and author of the Seamus nominated Henry Swan series, Devil in the Hole, which was named by Suspense Magazine as one of the best crime novels in 2013 and the Seamus nominated Second Story Man winner of the Beverly Hills Book Award. And I'm not sure we have Chris yet, but we'll tell you about him anyway. So when he jumps in, it'll be very seamless. So Chris Knopf has, has published 17 mystery thrillers, including nine Sam Aquilo Hampton's mysteries. His books have received numerous awards and starred reviews, and his short stories have appeared in anthologies, including the Best American Mysteries, as well as Ellery Queen and the Alfred Hitchcock Magazine. Um, and everybody on the panel writes full-length mysteries, as well as short fiction. And so... Tina, I wanted to start with you. You just had your debut novel come out. Did you start with novel writing? Did you start with short fiction? How did you enter the craft? Well, you know, that's it's a great question because I think that most people believe that writers often start with short, and I think it's true. But I started with long, um, and I took my time writing with to witness. I had no deadline. I had no idea that I would ever, you know, if I could really do this or not. And when I finished it, and I was really finally where I thought I could, I could pitch it and chop it out, I got nervous and I put it aside and said, I don't really want to find out if this is going to get published. <laughs> I was just too nervous. So I, I decided to try my hand at short fiction. And um, um, I heard about a competition that was coming up and I said, oh, you know what? I'm on vacation. I'm going to relax and, and got right into short and loved it. And got that story was picked up. And then I got... Um, into flash fiction right after that. So that was a whole discovery for me. I didn't even know that I could do it. And I, and I love them both. I love both of them. And I try to use them a little bit as like palate cleansers, I guess, in between um, writing my novel. Or that makes a lot of sense. And I think for so many people who start out as readers, I feel like a lot of readers start with novels and sort of short fiction may not be the sort of thing that we are always reading. And so when we sit down to write for the first time, it may not occur to us to write something short. Vio, was it the same for you? How, what, how did you get your start in writing? Um, I would be the opposite. Um, I started writing short fiction 40 years ago, which how is that possible? Cause I'm only 40 years old, but yeah, it was in the eighties and I was just starting out in my law career. I was um, starting a job as an assistant district attorney, but I had this real creative side to me and my job was so intense. I wanted to squeeze some writing in uh, into the evenings and weekends. So, you know, that's what's uh, good about short fiction. So that's how I I started and that was back in the day when we used to print everything out, um, put it in those manila envelopes with our self-addressed stamped envelopes and wait excitedly by the mailbox for that little squib of a rejection slip, sorry, <laughs> goodbye. Um, and then you'd get all thrilled when you would get a little editor comment written on it, which today, if you ever get a, uh, an editor's 
personal comment on your writing, you should chalk that up as a really great thing because usually they are the form rejections. But anyway, that was back in the day. There were there were quite a few more lit mags and magazines to submit to, and that has changed somewhat. Um, but yeah, I got started in the short fiction, squeezed it in, did a number of short stories in the 80s and 90s, and it wasn't until I took a brief uh, break from my law career uh, when I started writing novels. Uh, but another good thing about starting with short fiction is you may write a short story um, about a character that you later really get to like that character a lot and develop that character into a novel, which I did with, um, now I have a whole series with the character who started out as a short story, Dana Hargrove. So that was kind of my journey. And when you started with Dana as a, um, or when you decided to make her a novel, a, a, or put her into a full length novel, what gave you the confidence to start writing a novel versus short? Because obviously it's a very different time undertaking. Well, uh, that kind of evolved out of my work. Actually, at the point I started writing a novel, I had just worked on a huge um, uh, Colombian narcotics cartel investigation. And so I had this, um, my short story about Dana was when she was uh, trying a misdemeanor case. That was when I was in misdemeanors as an assistant DA. So I wrote a misdemeanor case and it was, um, I really liked her. And then 10 years, 15 years later, after I'd had this big experience with a big case, I decided to make her a rookie in a very complex case. And I just liked all of the different ethical conflicts that were involved in that. So that's how that happened. I love that. Now, Charles, you're a former journalist. So how did that inform you? Because I, I would imagine journalists are sort of very comfortable in the short form. Is Did that lead you to start with short fiction or how did you get into it? Um, well, actually, I got into journalism accidentally. Um, <laughs> I always wanted to be a novelist. And then I realized that I wasn't going to make a living as a novelist. And so I accidentally got a job in the mailroom at New York Magazine and sort of fell into journalism. And um, it, it actually taught me a lot. I'm glad I, I did. I, I kind of looked down on journalists before that, but um, one of the things it taught me was word count and making every word count. But, but I actually started um, when I was 12 writing a novel. I found that recently when I moved and maybe one day I'll finish it, but right now it's, it's only about 10 pages. Um, I, I always wanted to write novels and always did write novels. And, I wrote a couple of short stories over the, the years, but um, I, I wasn't, I found it very difficult because I needed the space to, um, to, to sort of work out character and story. And I really looked, I, I thought of short stories a little as, as poetry. Um, you, really, you really can't make a mistake in a short story because the, the mistakes are, are glaring. Where in a novel, you can make mistakes and sort of, you know, people will, will sort of um, gloss over it. But I, I, I had to because I got a call from a friend of mine, uh, Kelly Jones, who was um, editing the uh, Long Island Noir, one of the noir series, one of the Akashic. And she said to me, because she knew that I had a, a, a novel out, um, Swan's Last Song, which had been nominated for Shameless. And so um, she asked me if I had a short story set in Long Island, a crime story. And I lied and said, I do, because <laughs> I learned as a journalist, you never say no. So I had about a week to write one. And I wrote one, I had the character of Swan already. So I wrote a short story with Swan, which became, uh, which was taken, it's called The Star Burns Bright. And then I actually, because you also learn as a journalist never to waste anything, I use that short story as the first chapter of one of the Swan books. So, um, so that's how I, I sort of got into writing short stories and, and really like them, but they're, they're really tough. Um, the good thing is that you can be finished in a, a few days or a week, whereas a novel, you're talking about a year. You write much faster than I do because both of those measures I, I, do not apply to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm a very fast typist. I can type 90 words a minute. Oh, I'm a fast typist too, but yeah. the words don't always flow. Yeah. But I'd love to dig in a little more to that craft conversation, because that idea of every word counting and not being able to hide your mistakes, I think, is one reason why it can be a very intimidating 
form. I think when people are getting into novel writing, they can think about, okay, I've got an outline, I've got a middle, you know, middle build, I need to have the climax. How do you approach a short story? Is your, is your thought process when you begin the same? If you outline a novel, do you outline your short story? Do you kind of free flow it? Let's start with you, Charles. How, how do you think about that? Uh, I, I've never out, out, outlined anything in my life. You know, I, I hated it as a kid when you had to give an outline. I, I don't know what's going to happen on the next page or the next sentence. I usually start with either character or a bit of dialogue or a first line. And so it, it, is, it's, it is a different headspace. I mean, I can't, if I have a novel, I know I have a long time to develop something. With a short story, I've got to make sure that, um, that, that I'm going in a, in a trajectory that's, that's gonna be like 10 or 12 pages or whatever it's gonna be. So it's very different. And I wish I could done, explain the process. I, I just can't, um, you know, it's, it's like telling a, a long joke or a short joke. You know, you, you, you either can or you can. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. and I think the interesting thing is when people sometimes start, they might think, oh, if it's going to be short, I can't have any description or I can't have, you know, the sight, sound, smells. But of course, those are so important in short stories that it's really other things that are being pulled out. Because Tina, I'm thinking about your story, Tokyo Stranger, which your novel is very filled with detail and all that. And so is your short fiction. So how do you balance it? What do you feel like when every word counts? What are you needing to think about when you're writing? Yeah, it's so interesting because short fiction, because I wrote long fiction first, right? Short fiction seriously influenced my long form writing going forward. And um, in Tokyo Stranger, for example, you know, one well-placed description, you know, the color of the dress or the rain, you know, or just those few details set you set you up you know he walks into the jazz club and all you need is a little bit and people put themselves in there and you know I think that's always a good thing to go by generally when you're writing that you want to give the reader something to fill in but of course in short stories even more so oh I think Chris is joining us I think we have Chris we will mm -hmm. have him on in just a <laughs> just a minute I think that makes sense, Via, for you, because you started in the short world. When you went to long, was it sort of this sense of like, oh, I can write these long descriptions that I wanted to, or do you find you're still sort of very tight and short, or what's what's different for you with that space? Well, um, yeah, with a short story, I usually just start with uh, a single idea, an image. I might have overheard a line of conversation. It just sets my imagination going, and I go for it without any outline. I do, unlike Charles, I do outline, I think a long time about my plots from my novels. And then I have a period of outlining it, which is really writing little um, kind of summaries for each chapter actually. And then as I write the novel, I um, end up changing that outline somewhat because you'll find inconsistencies. In a short story, no, I just start with the idea and I just go for it. And um, I like what both Tina and Charles said about the short form. Um, Charles said, it's like poetry. Tina said, just take a, a small bit of description. That's what you can do in a short story. And it really improves your writing uh, for novels as well, because you learn to find the most vivid way to bring the feeling or image that you want your reader's imagination to go with. So a lot of ways that you can do that are, for example, with your verbs. You can, uh, you know, use your thesaurus and um, you don't want to have just kind of a boring verb like your character walked into the room. Did your character shuffle or stride or um, stroll or uh, stagger or, you know, there's 101 ways to say it with just one word and you will bring up the image that you want. And this is what the beauty of writing short fiction is. It's almost like um, a way to improve your writing for your novels as well. The other thing you can do in short fiction, which I like to do, I don't know if anyone here has done this, but 
you will start a story and you may not know, do you want your, uh, you, you'll have a main character and maybe a couple of main characters. Do you want it from the point of view of one of them or the other? Do you want it first person, second person, third person? Do you want present tense, past tense? And since it is short, I've done this where I've written it like two or three different ways, you know, first person, present tense, third person, past tense, to see if I need a little more distance. And then you put it aside, pick it up and read it and which way works better for the feeling or the impact that you want. So that's what's fun about writing short fiction. I love that idea of almost treating it as a masterclass for yourself, where you're giving yourself the space to play that maybe we all might like to do with a novel. And I think sometimes we do, we say, gee, a scene's not working. How can I change it? But if you're three quarters of the way through the novel, it's really heartbreaking to say, you know, I think I've got the wrong point of view, Karen. Right. That, that would be a real challenge. Chris, we are so delighted to have you on. We've told the world about you a little bit. And what we're talking about now, since all of our panelists are people who write both long fiction and short fiction, for you, what's different about short fiction? Obviously the length, we'll take that as a given, but, but when you sit down to write, what's different? Well, I think, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, my computer crashed uh, at uh, 1144. Uh, <laughs> So I'm on my wife's computer and Kim had to let me in. Um, I think uh, with novels, I generally will have the beginning and the end figured out more or less. But I think with a, um, with a short story, I, I do have it, I don't outline, I don't write it down, but I have it in my head uh, what the, the arc of the story is gonna be. I think you really have to with a short story because there's no room to play around with it that much. You have to know what you're doing. And I don't even start it unless I know I have that whole thing in my work out in my head. Um, I think short stories are very, very difficult. They do have the benefit of being short. So that uh, what I like the most is that I can refine it. Uh, you know, to, to rewrite a novel three or four times, I wouldn't do that. You know, I, I put a first draft and then I revise. But with a short story, I really can refine, 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 refine quite a bit before I let it go. And I, and I like that because I like that feeling of it being pretty polished and I've done everything I possibly can. Mm -hmm. Well, and one thing I think, I think it was Tina, but I can't remember, talked about it as a palette refresher, you know, for people who are putting in the work of a book, whether you are on the fast side like Charles or the longer side like some others of us, um, how does it come into letting you step away from your work? Like, do you find that the short story helps inform the novel or is it just giving you a mental break while you're still working on it? I think, was it Tina, were you the one who was talking yeah, about the I, palette I, refresher? I that. Um, yeah, what I find is that, you know, the decisions I make for my long, for my novel, right, before I start this is the point of view and the tense and, you know, all those decisions are made and it's a series. So the, the pleasure of the short story is, I think Theo was mentioning, you, know, you, you play with POV tense and, and, and so you get that break in between. And sometimes I'll start my writing session with a little bit of short work, right? So before I sit to work on the next chapter of my book, I might um, fiddle with a flash piece or short fiction and it gets me, gets the creative juices flowing but it's separate and, and I find it really very much, not just between writing books, because I'm only on my second, um, but be between writing sessions for my, long, for my longer work. And um, I wanted to jump on what Charles had said about never outlining. Um, you know, I'm generally an outliner, but for my short work, sometimes I will outline, but a lot of times I find that, um, I think Thea mentioned it, a, a line. You know, an opening line comes to me. Charles mentioned it too. An opening line will come to me and then that develops the whole story. And then I'll write this story from the seat of my pants, which I don't, I don't have too much experience doing that. And it's such a pleasure when the whole thing just can't, comes out sort of fully formed. Um, of course, it needs to be revised and edited because every word counts and it has to, you know, every word has to have a bang. But that when you get that line and, and that's, Something you can do with short fiction, of course, that's harder to do for a novel. It can be done, but one of the pleasures also is you can take that short story and perhaps make it a scene or a chapter in a book, you know. But I love that opening line spark. 
Well, and as writers, we struggle so much, I think sometimes, particularly if we're working on a series where, okay, we've committed to doing more books that you sort of feel like maybe the creativity that first brought you to the page maybe isn't always there. And it's a tool to unlock that creativity by doing work that somebody's maybe not asking for right now, unless you're fortunate enough to have somebody who is writing an anthology and wants you to put a work that would fit into it it almost, you're still working, but it's a way to jumpstart your, your brain without sitting there saying, gee, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, which I love that idea. And that's and where prompts come in too. I know you and I have talked about prompts before. Um, absolutely, and the idea that they can not just be a writing process, but really- They unlock get, things and, and get you going in a direction you might not have gone in. Well, and the idea of discovering characters is really interesting because Via, you said you have a novel that started with a short story character who you wanted, or a whole series. You wanted to learn more about her and inhabit it. Um, was it the same for you, Charles or Chris? Have you turned short story characters into full length novels? Charles? Um, well, it, I didn't really turn it in. When, when, I, when I used it, I used a character who was already in a novel. So I knew I was going to write another novel with him. Um, the thing, it's funny you said about committed to it, to a whatever. I'm not popular enough to be committed to anything. So it's <laughs> not like, like I'm not Lee Child where, where people are saying, where's your next Reacher? So it, it actually gives you a lot of freedom to, to do whatever you want when, when you're like that. And so um, it's got to it's gotta interest me. And the difference is, for me, a novel is a world whereas a short story is an incident. And so with a novel, no matter how long it takes me, whether it's six months or a year or a year and a half, it's a world, it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. Whereas with a short story, it's, it's usually just an incident. Every, everything you write has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. But with a short story, you have the beginning, the middle and the end much closer together. So it's, um, it's, for me, it's more of a challenge. Uh, for other people, it might be the opposite. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna comment on that notion of stepping away. I, I had been writing, I write short stories. I started writing them again only a few years ago. And I, again, meaning since grad school. Uh, but I did it as a, as a relief from the book. Uh, so it just, not that I really felt I needed a relief per se, but it was nice just to do something different just to, to get a different character, get a different um, feeling. And as Charles said, it's just, a, it's just a little brief segment of time relatively. And, uh, and it, so it's a nice compact thing and it's, it just feels like a comfortable place to live for a while. I haven't uh, spun off uh, short story characters. I have gone the other way. I've put uh, some of my novel characters into short stories uh, at the suggestion of somebody at uh, Alfred Hitchcock, I think. Um, I was speaking to her once and she said, yeah, why don't, you, why don't you do that? Take somebody that you already know, which was a great idea. And that inspired, I said, great, yeah, sure. Cause I got all these people and uh, it'd really be fun to stick them in another situation. Uh, and also readers who, who know you like that. They like to be able to, you know, visit with some of your novel characters. I love that. And that idea for people who are starting out writing, I think we talked a little bit about sort of maybe starting with a dialogue, piece of dialogue or um, a character that, that really strikes you or maybe like a specific setting. I'd love to get just a little bit deeper into sort of the craft side of what advice you might have for somebody who's thinking about short stories, somebody in the audience. Via, let's start with you. What advice would you give somebody? I, well, I keep a little notebook with ideas. I don't know if other writers here do that, but things happen to you in your life. I'm at the age where I forget things, so I jot it down. <laughs> but um, little uh, interesting incidents happen in your life. You hear a bit of conversation. You see maybe you've been living next door to that neighbor for years and you say hello and you don't really know them at all, but it kind of, you know, ignites your imagination. So I just take a little small idea like that let my imagination go. And um, I, uh, on the palate cleansing thing, if you are a novelist, I always, always write a couple of short stories in between novels because it does really help with the creativity and with the honing your language. 
down. But if you're just starting, yeah, go with an idea, just go with it, go with your imagination. And uh, after you write it down, what I would say is, and this is for anybody who also wants to submit it for publication, put it aside for a long time, not just a week or so. I, I've kind of violated this rule myself because maybe there's a deadline. I want to submit something for an anthology and maybe the deadline's coming up and I only wait, wait for a week. But uh, the story is still inside you. You're, you know, you finished it. You're going, oh, wow, that's a great story. Um, and um, it's still inside you for quite a while. It's best really to put it aside for as long as you can until you've almost forgotten that you wrote it and um, pick it up months later, if you have the luxury of that time, pick it up months later, look at, it, look at it, read it out loud, definitely read it out loud to yourself and you will say, oh geez, um, that really needs a lot of work. Um, that almost always happens. Um, and when you read it aloud, you will hear dialogue that maybe people don't really sound like that. Um, do you want your character, does your character really talk like that? Um, you will notice that, you will notice your bad habits that maybe you repeat the same word over and over again, the same phrase that you like to use. You will use too many words that maybe are um, throwaway words that add nothing to your story, like suddenly, very, just, you know, little words you don't need. Um, and all that's great for reading aloud and then have someone else read your story too. Did you say too much or did you say too little? If you say too little, um, you confuse your reader. If you say too much, you're not honoring their um, intelligence and their imagination. So you want to maintain the suspense by withholding some things, but not too much. So have other people read it, read it aloud to yourself, put it aside for a while, read it again and edit. That would be all my advice. Well, and I, there's so many things you said there that I think are so interesting. I'm, and one that I, I particularly love is this idea of not trying to edit while you're writing. So it's okay when you're writing that draft to put subtly and just and all those adverbs, put them in because you know a couple months later you'll come back and you can take them out. So that right. that first draft can be that creative time that you know down the road you'll take care of. Exactly. And I think that notion of a beta reader, of just finding somebody who will tell you what they really think, it's a much easier ask with a short story too, isn't it, than a full length novel. With a full length novel, you can't ask 10 people you know, for their input, but with a short story, finding some writing friends who are gonna give you honest feedback is, is probably a, an easier ask. And I've certainly found that writers are very generous with their time and happy to share their, their skill when you develop those relationships. Chris, what aha moments did you have when you were learning the craft of, of short stories that might be useful for people? Well, I think in all these things, um, the best writing advice I think that there is, it's really simple, is to just to write. Um, I, th I think by the same token, people who tend to struggle, I think they think too much and they plan and they plot and they, you know, they deliberate and all that. And I I just, um, it's uh, Annie Lamott's book, Bird by Bird, I still think is the best of all those books. And she's, you know, she talks about the shitty first graph, draft. And I think that's really, um, that's the best advice. It's just to write it all down and don't think, just write it. I mean, if, you, if you're not really sure where you, your story is going to go, if you don't have an ending in your head, it's okay. Just start writing the story. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll go through it. And at some point, you'll either realize, oh, I've got a story here or you'll, um, uh, you know, or you'll abandon it because it's not really going anywhere and then write something else. I think, you know, that, that's, that to me is the, is the heart and soul of the whole thing. I do have a little tip though. <laughs> I have an oddball tip with short stories. Is that about um, maybe half of the stories I've written have been based on jokes. So a joke is a really, it's a, it's a especially the little narrative jokes you know, where you, you have a, there's a little bit of a story built into the joke itself, because by definition, there's a punchline. And so you can kind of think, oh, okay, I, that's, I get, I get it. I get that story. I get that flow. And it's not like you're writing the joke, but if you can think of the structure of the joke and you think of the punchline, it can be excellent scaffolding for a story. So that's my, that's my one tip that most people don't come up with. The only problem is, I don't know that many jokes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've only known about like six jokes and I think I've used them all already. So anybody wants to send me really good like little story type jokes, uh, please do. You use the help. I love that idea. I, I wrote one short story that was sort of a riff on an idea that came up in a child children's book that I was like, oh, that would be an interesting setup for a murder. But using using jokes, I think, is is brilliant because I think that beginning, middle and an end is an interesting question, particularly for people when they're writing short stories, because sometimes I think people find that they've written maybe a scene, but not a story. And Charles, do you have any thoughts for somebody who's sort of trying to figure out, well, how can I have somebody change in just, you know, however many words, 10,000 words, or how do you think about that? Um, you know, I, I don't think about it. I'm more like, uh, and, the, and the thing is what I'm afraid, of, and everyone is different. So I, I don't, if I give advice, it's only about what I do because everyone writes differently. I mean, Chris tends to, to, to need to know the, the, you know, the beginning and the end. If I, if I do that, if I, I'm afraid if I outline or if I know too much, I will, I will try to make the characters do something they wouldn't do ordinarily. Because when you create characters, they're, they're real. And so um, I, I have, I've always trusted that, and I've never gotten stuck yet, that I will know what they're going to, at the time that I need to know what they're gonna do, I'm gonna know. And it's the same thing, as long as I know there's gonna be a, a beginning and middle and an end, I'm going to um, I'm going to be okay uh, because I'll know when I reach the end. So I don't think about those things too much. And the tip, I think Chris's tip, I always was told Chris that the best jokes come out of advertising people, and Chris was in advertising people, and prison. I, I was told that's what I was told the best jokes come from. My, my tip would be, um, and probably all writers use this to an extent, is just ask yourself what if. Whatever it is, you can be walking in the street and you say, well, what if I were walking in the street and this happened? And often that leads to, um, you know, I don't do murder mysteries, but there are so many other crimes that you can, um, can use. So that would be my tip along with, with Chris's if, if that works for you. Um, the other thing that <clears throat> I heard of one professor down in Florida to, does with novels, but you could do it with short stories too is take a short story or a novel that's already been written, change the names of the characters and change the places that, it's, that it takes place. And you will find, even if you're trying to fo follow the plot, it will change because you've changed the characters and you've changed the place. So if you're ever stuck, try that. Um, you know, just take a classic idea. plot or something. I love that idea. I'm taking lots of mental notes on things to do. I love, I love this. <laughs> Just don't be too close because then you'll be plagiarizing, but you, you won't wind up plagiarizing. You will veer away from, from that plot uh, sooner than you think. Well, and if you tap into something that's very popular too, you can find yourself getting into the um, you yeah, know, and put girl, retelling of X. So. Right, and just put girl in the title. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a Jane Austen, you know, re-inhabit that world with some other people and, and you can do all kinds of things. And what was the downstairs life like? Um, Tina, I, I'd love to get your, your tips. And then I, I want to ask you about location too, because we've been talking a lot about character as maybe being a starting point for short stories. And I'm curious if you start with character or if you start with location, because location seems to be such a big thing in your stories. You know, it is true. Location is a big deal because I mentioned this in my cocktail hour last night. I'm very much a Japanophile because my son lives there and, um, I, you know, I'm immersing myself in their culture and their literature. And I find myself that my short stories tend to take place in Japan. Not all of my settings are there, but a lot of them are. And it, it, I do find because of the novelty of the, the setting, it, it's helpful for me to spark something totally new. Um, so setting does influence me quite a bit. And um, on that note of going with that inspiration, um, you know, Chris had mentioned something about using an existing character um, and Charles had mentioned it also, but also um, the idea of adding a character. So I have a, a whole universe for my novel series, but there's a character or two that maybe I didn't want to put in this time because didn't want to weigh down my novel. So I have this interesting character that I'm waiting to introduce into my series and they're just kind of on, you know, backstage. So I've used that 
concept before because I do write with my character because I'm a, definitely a character person. So I find out these Japanese stories that I'm writing, they're connected. I, I can't help myself. I know that they're going to end up all being connected one way or the other. And that's not a bad thing because they stand alone anyway. But if I ever choose, if I'm ever able or lucky enough to get them to be put together, they, they can have connecting tissue. And I, and I love that about the idea. And um, as far as tips go, um, you know, Chris Charles said he never, he's never gotten stuck. And I think that the, the trick to that is to just sitting down and writing. I think sometimes um, somebody says, well, I want to write a short story, but I just don't know what to write. I find that if I'm sitting and writing, it will be written. I will write something. The writer's block doesn't happen when I'm writing. It happens if I'm if, without not getting myself into the chair. But once I'm sitting, I am writing. And I also do a lot of longhand writing for my shorts. I write flash fiction and, and even my short stories. If I get an inspiration, this happened to me um, for the story that was picked up by um, the Best New England Second Chances. That story came to me online at a bagel shop. And I got my bagel and sat down and grabbed a notebook and wrote the whole story out longhand. Of course, it needed to be you know, refined and edited, but the whole story came out in one. So you kind of have to take your opportunity. And I know most people move around with an electronic device, but I never go anywhere without the notebook because that's my fastest way to produce something. If I write, if I type fast, I'll never be able to read it again, but I can always read my handwriting. And I think that, that addressing that when it comes to you and at the very least writing the idea but if you can write the story if it's coming if it's flowing you should just let it go because you could lose an opportunity I don't think it'll be gone forever but it's a great opportunity and then I wanted to talk about prompts and deadlines some people need prompts and some people really need deadlines and I think that like Via said it's great to let something sit in a drawer but I've gotten some of my best writing done knowing that that deadline was at the end of the month and I have to get it done. Otherwise that story would never have been born. And that story is born the way it is because they gave me a prompt and I might not have written that story at all without the prompt. I think a prompt is like your best friend, a writer's best friend. And I, I don't think people should shy away from them at all. I know some people don't work with prompts, but I think you should consider them. I think they stretch your muscles. Well, and prompts is a great lead into because I want to talk about some of the um, practicalities of publishing stories and lots of anthologies have prompts. Um, and I always wonder, were the stories written for the prompt or did people have a prompt in or did they have a story and they saw the prompt and said, I think I can make a couple changes. I know that was my experience with with some stories. Tina, let's start with you, um, particularly with your, you know, Stranger Comes to Town prompt, I think it was. Interesting thing about Stranger Comes to Town, that's the only story I re, I tweaked for the anthology. That story existed. It was not picked up by somebody else, um, but um when MWA came out for their submissions, they were looking for, you know, when a stranger comes to town. And I said, oh, I have a stranger in my Tokyo story. It wasn't entitled Tokyo Stranger, but the main, the premise was based on this stranger. And I said, I'm just changing one word in the title and, and making sure that, and I submitted that. But normally I write to the, to the prompt. I very, I, I think that's the only incident. Um, and I wanna plug here that that story is coming out in the MWA anthology next month. And that's edited by Michael Carita, and I'll be writing my stories there next to Michael Connolly and Lisa Unger and Steve Hamilton and Joe Hill. And I'm just so excited. So I just can't help it. But um, normally I write to the prompt. That's my answer to that question. Via, yeah, how, about, how about you? Um, do you like prompts? And when you're submitting things, do you sort of look and say, oh, this anthology is looking for you know, story set in Texas. I'm going to write one about Texas, or do you take the story you already have? How do you think about calls for submissions? Uh, I've had uh, both ways. And by the way, congratulations, Tina. I just love that Tokyo Stranger story. It's fantastic. Okay. And you were talking a min minute ago about setting. Yeah, certainly it's in um, Tokyo, and um, setting is an important aspect, but I always feel like the character drives a story. And, you know, I just really saw your character there. And um, this is what Allison Galen said yesterday. Character is, a real, is the real driver of your story. But anyway, as far as anthologies and prompts, 
Um, a lot of them you'll probably notice are pretty broad. So um, I've had it both ways where um, I already had a story that I felt fit the prompt that I saw advertised. And I said, oh, cool, my story, I think it's gonna fit right in there. Or maybe it'll need a few tweaks. Other times I'll see a prompt and maybe I will have had an idea in my mind percolating for a while and it's been in there and the prompt will get me going. So I've had it both ways. Um, and then I've also seen calls for submissions for prompts that just don't interest me. I, I'm just not gonna write something that I'm not interested in. I really have to get behind what I'm writing and get engrossed in it and enjoy writing the story. So it happens both ways. Charles, what's your publication advice? Do you have sort of for people sitting in the audience who maybe have written and polished their story and now they'd like to get it out in the world? I'm probably not the best person to, to answer that. I have a friend who I asked uh, and you know you can Google all the, all the magazines and all that. And the reason is that because I'm not basically a short story writer, every short story that I've written has been, I don't think of it as a prompt, I think of it as an assignment because I'm coming from that journalism world. So a friend of mine was doing a, um, an anthology of, uh, and it was called Down to the River. So he said, would you write a story that had a river in it? So I did. Uh, I wrote a story recently, the book isn't out yet. Um, the, I had to, it was all uh, Warren Zevon song titles. So I like him and I chose Excitable Boy and wrote it. So I, those are prompts, I guess, but. To me, they're, they're more assignments. And so, um, and then because I know the editor of Mystery Tribune, he, he said to me, he, he um, published a couple of my stories, said, can you write me another story? So I'm probably not the best person because I should know more and I wanna know more. But, um, you know, there's Mystery Weekly. I'm sure you guys, the rest of the panel has published in probably lots of different places. So you're probably better off asking them is in terms of publishing advice, but I think contests are probably uh, a good way to, to go or the anthologies if you hear about them. Well, and a question I'll ask you though, about this idea of the, when it's an assignment, does it still give you sort of the freedom and sort of the, you know, the palate cleanser that we've been talking about sort of, you know, that, that you can explore and play or when it's an assignment, does it bind you in? Well, when I say assignment, Again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not famous or popular enough where if I say, look, I don't have any idea, I, I can't do it, that they're, you know, the, whole, the whole project's gonna collapse because I'm not in it. So, uh, but, I, but what, it, what it does do for me is, is I, being, having been a journalist and having to, had to make my living that way, uh, I learned never to say no. So I will say yes to, to anything. And then if I say yes, I will not disappoint, I'll do it. So it's, it's more like that for me, Jennifer, than, than you know, than, oh, it's an assignment, um, you know, I've got it. So I, I won't, if, if I don't have an idea, I will tell the person I just don't have an idea. Um, well, and I think it comes down maybe a little bit to what Tina was saying, that we all have different ways of getting motivated or working or fires. So some of us need the long term, you know, right. time. others, it's sort of like, I got to write a story about this, I've got the angle. So instead of you know, you still need the bagel shop inspiration and, and some of those pieces. Chris, do you have any thoughts on submission? I know the people in the audience, I think, can do a Googling and things like that about, you know, Ellery Queen wants this length or that length. But in terms of sort of how to approach the submission process, have you found anything useful? No. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I feel very fortunate. I've gotten you know, I, I place my stories in all the places you'd want to be, and I just submit them and hope that they like them. Uh, I don't really, especially the more open-ended type uh, magazines and journals and things. I, I do like a prompt uh, that's wide open. I'm, I'm also in that book with Charles, the river book, and uh, that's pretty easy. It's a river, so it's just, all, all we needed to do is to have a river. Uh, the Best of New England stories, I've been in several of those and you just have to be in New England. So that's not that hard. Um, there is a contest. Uh, some people really like this stuff and there's a giant contest called NYC Midnight. Uh, they do a couple different versions, but there's a short story, there's a flash fiction and a short story one. 
And I have friends who love that thing because they actually give you three prongs. So it's a pretty tight box. Uh, sometimes I think that's okay. Other times I think I just can't do this. I can't put these pieces together. I'm not feeling it. Uh, so I don't always, always, I mean, I enter sometimes, they give you like three shots and then you get eliminated and that get, makes you humble. Um, I wanna go back to the, Charles mentioned advertising and comedy. Advertising, I was a copywriter for many years and we we're most inspired by stand-up comics. Uh, and we often talked about how you really wanna to go to a you know, comedic kind of sensibility when you're writing copy, even if it isn't funny, because there's a, uh, there's a term that we use called uh, surprising but relevant, meaning that you get to a place in the, in the narrative or the ad or whatever where Something happens that kind of sort of surprising, which is a delightful thing, but it's relevant to the story. So it makes sense. It connects into everything, but you weren't expecting it. Uh, and stand up comics are, are the best at that. So I think every, all, all copywriters love, you know, to sort of feed off of that kind of, uh, that kind of sensibility. And as, as far as submitting, I, you know, I have other friends who do a lot of, write a lot of short stories. <coughs> They, you know, it's the rule of if you want to write, just write. So just keep writing stuff and writing stuff. Also, if you want to get published, keep submitting. Mm -hmm. You know, submit, 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 submit. It's okay. Just do it. Uh, I, I lose track of where they all are sometimes. But, um, you know, I have two friends in a writer's group who last year uh, both got published uh, for the first time. And, you know, and they tried and they tried and they submitted a lot of stuff and they never got discouraged. And they learned in the process. <laughs> You learn things. Um, and the only other thing I'll mention uh, is that you follow the submission guidelines exactly. Do not deviate even a little tiny bit, not even a little itsy bitsy bitsy bit. Everything has to be exactly what they tell you to do. Uh, I've worked as an editor as well. So I know when I see something that has something isn't what we asked for, you know, you're gonna go. So uh, it's a simple thing just to be subservient to that. Can I add something to that, Jen? Please. And that is to read the magazine. Don't just send it without reading it because you, you will learn, learn so much by reading the magazine. You'll know, for instance, that um, I think that, you know, you don't, profanity doesn't go for, you know, with Alfred Hitchcock magazine or whatever, but don't just send it without reading the mag, one, at least one copy of the magazine. Well, and I think that idea is a great one too for when we've talked about the tips for writing short stories. Maybe it goes without saying, but reading lots of short stories mm -hmm. is another great way to make sure that, that you understand it's not just a shorter version of a novel, but how are people doing it and how are people doing it well? Mm -hmm. um, read, read outside the genre. I'm, I'm sorry, just real quick. Read outside the genre. Read the greats. Read Chekhov and Salinger and Ernest Hemingway and uh, uh, Fitzgerald. I mean, the people who were really, I mean, that I would take much more inspiration from that than from this, from the mystery world, because you're going to be in that anyway. But as far as artistic uh, enlightenment, that's my suggestion. Now we've had um, a couple more questions about contests um, and, and a question on definition, flash fiction came up. And I know that Tina talked about it a little bit in the chat, but Tina, do you want to talk a little bit more about flash fiction and just what people might want to know about it or think about it? Yeah, um, I stumbled on it. I'm, flash fiction is usually, I know the rules seem to be evolving there, but under a thousand words and microfiction are under a hundred maybe. Um, there are competitions out, that's how I found out about it. Go to your social media uh, platforms, the ones I think Twitter is great for this because you can hear about a lot of different um, organizations, e e-zines, um, competitions on Twitter. And as people post, you know, they just submitted something or they're waiting to hear, you can learn about them and, and you know, Google them and get involved, right? Um, and what I find about flash fiction and that you have to be really careful about, and I think Charles was saying that in short stories, you have to make sure that it is not just an, just the incident, right? You need the whole arc of a story. And in flash fiction, that's really hard. And um, what you'll find in some of the competitions is that you can write something really evocative, really interesting. You know, people might love it, but it might not get chosen because it doesn't have a story in it, right? So that's the, I think that's the hardest part. Um, but what it, you know, you kind of have to try your hand at it. And that's where prompts and deadlines come in, right? If you, they're very good with prompts and flash fiction um, because 
it's I don't see too many instances where they're looking for just submissions. They're usually looking for flash fiction submissions on a topic or a theme or something. <clears throat> I also wanted to mention that I put some links much earlier. I can post them again. Um, and I think most people can do a lot of this Googling on your own. But what's nice about the posts that I put in was that they're kind of clearinghouses, like poets and writers and um, Writers HQ, they're clearing house of information. So every month, like Writers HQ will tell you what competitions are coming up for that month, whether it's short story or flash fiction. It gives you deadlines, cost, if there is a cost and how, you know. So sometimes the hardest part is even knowing where to submit. We know the some of the obvious, but we only know the obvious because we know them now. We only know them because, you know, I didn't know them two years ago, right? So um, there are people, in the audience who don't know where to start. So I think those sources, those posts are farther up. Like I said, I'll post them again. Um, just kind of get out there. And that advice that Charles gave about reading before you submit, and that could be, that's for anything, for a competition or whatever, mm -hmm. because you could be completely out in left field. And, um, and the other thing is to read, if you get feedback, if you're lucky enough to get feedback on short fiction, and that's hard, but sometimes you do, take it you know, really pay attention to it. Um, but flash fiction is really the true, you know, where every word counts. And my biggest piece of advice for flash fiction, especially if you're gonna write micro fiction, that's a hundred words, is make sure your title does a lot of heavy lifting. So you're not wasting any words. And um, like somebody else said, you need, you can get readers. Short, short fiction, you can have a lot of people look at because it, especially flash fiction. But flash fiction, not everybody likes to even read, forget about write, so. Well, and that's a nice, very practical tip. And I think like, another practical thing for, for people who are maybe working on their first novel to know about short fiction is that having a publication credential is a very nice thing when you're sending out your query letters. Um, it just gives agents a confidence that, okay, it might be worth me opening and reading the first couple pages because somebody has said this person can write. Yeah, I agree with you. And I have one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, I feel like there's a lot more buzz in the UK for flash fiction. And um, I sort of got more and more involved in it, like I said, through Twitter. If you go to my website, there are some links there for some of my pieces that were picked up. And um, those are places that have co competitions constantly running. Uh, Reflex fiction, um, ad hoc fiction, uh, Retreat West. They're, they're all on my website. I'll put that in there. And you know, please visit my website. Please sign up for my newsletter. Uh, <laughs> but, well, a good uh, opportunity to say that all of the, the websites for everybody on the panel are, are on the information for today. And we have about seven minutes left. So I know we've gotten some questions in the chat that I think we've addressed, but we would love to, to incorporate um, anything that, that you've got here for questions. So please type those in and scroll up through the chat to find the resources that Tina was talking about. If and, I could add a couple more quick uh, resources. Yes, please. Uh, Short Mystery Fiction Society, they have a list serv. They The members are always emailing with um, giving information on places to submit, Short Mystery Fiction Society. Also, Submittable is where we pretty much send our electronic submissions. They have listings of uh, anthologies and magazines that are open. And one other thing, if anyone here is uh, in the Mystery Writers of America, New York chapter, um, here at Sisters in Crime, it's Murderous March, but over at MWA New York, it's also uh, March is a big month for our mentor program. So get people to read your writing and throughout the month of March, you can send your writing in and get somebody, get a mentor to take a look at it. That is great advice. And what I love about what we've talked about today is that short story writing has an artistic benefit for us, no matter what we're working on. It's just a way to exercise our writing muscle, as well as this practical side of getting your name out there and in front of readers, which is, of course, you know, we want to find more people who are interested in what we're writing in our stories. Um, 
And I think that since we have just about five minutes left, I am just gonna ask the quick speed question of what you're writing right now, whether it's a short story or long form. Chris, I'm gonna start with you. What are you working on these days? Well, I've got a couple of uh, full uh, novel manuscripts in the drawer that I go back and forth at uh, during the COVID time. Uh, I just finished a short story uh, on assignment about two weeks ago. So I'm not really doing anything. I'm, uh, I'm writing email right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an art in and of itself, a topic for another panel. Charles, how about you? What are you working on? Um, well, I finished a, um, a new PI novel that's being circulated and I'm polishing off a um, kind of a sequel to Second Story Man called Man on the Run uh, and I'm toying with a short story. I love hearing when people have multiple projects going at once because very inspiring for me. I tend to have a very one direction mind. And so you guys have given me so much to think about. It also gives me an excuse not to do any of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that new project. Yeah. yeah, I can't decide which to go back to. So, Mia, what are you working on? Uh, I'm working on my sixth and plan to be my last in the Hargrove novel and I'm about halfway through it. Um, and I also have three or four short stories I wrote um, during our tough year, and they're out in the world, hopefully trying to find a home in a magazine. Now, is there a potential for you to be like a Conan Doyle situation where people aren't going to let you walk away from, from Dana? It's going to be hard to say goodbye. I don't know. Well, the thing is, my novels are all spaced five or six years apart. So the first novel, she's 26, and this novel, she's 60 years old. So I could go back and fill in in between if I want, but <laughs> we'll wait and see. My friend Reed Coleman said that he, he stopped the Mo series because he didn't want to have him solving crimes in the old age home. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going to stop at 60. That's a good age. Cool. Tina, how about you? What are you working on these days? I just um, finished the first draft of the second book of my series, so Dead Man's Leap, um, and then I'm outlining book three. That's going to take place in Japan, and uh, I'm working on that outline, Charles, and uh, <laughs> I'm also working on a memoir in Flash because I'm enjoying my Flash, but I noticed that a lot, a lot of my Flash, just like my short stories tend to be set in Japan, my Flash fiction sense tends to be prompted by my childhood experiences. So I think I'm going to string those together. So I'm, I'm trying to work on that. And I have the, some pandemic stories and I can't decide whether or not to work on, I can't decide if there's an audience yet for them, but I swore at the beginning, I would never write anything about the pandemic, but I ended up with these, a couple of stories I really want to work on. So we'll see. That all sounds great. I am excited to read more of your work. I hope everyone signs up for your websites. Um, the links are all available and just you guys have given me so much to think about. This is wonderful. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to the audience for the great question. Thank you, Jen. You were great. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, nice job.